All right, Angela, I'm going to stop sharing here and uh, let you take over. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. You and Aaron both have used Lightroom for a long time. So I'm sure you've got some cool things you're going to show just how well Milio and Lightroom can work together. Definitely. Let's see. It looks like Aaron's online. Hey, Aaron. All right. You want me to go How's ahead and going? share my screen? Pretty yes, good. please. All right. So I use, uh, I use Lightroom quite a bit. I take most pictures on my DSLR and then I import them uh, into Lightroom and then over into Milio. Um, so to do that, a good import in Lightroom. Select it and I went out this morning and took a few pictures. So I'd have something to show and then hit import. Um, I typically import into a folder that Milio is not watching. The reason why I do that is because I have Lightroom set to convert the files to DNG. Um, and it just plays a little better uh, with Milio if you're not deleting files and recreating them. Okay. Once, once I have this imported though, I can go ahead and move it inside of Lightroom uh, over to a folder that's being watched by Milio and hit move. It just takes a couple seconds. Then if I come into Milio here, I can see all of my photos that I imported from Lightroom uh, have shown up. That's fine. And, and we go the other direction too, if people want to start in Milio and go to Lightroom, but this is flexible. You can, you can go either direction. And, and by the way, I just have to do this so everyone believes me, Aaron, I'm going to steal your screen for one second, because <laughs> literally half a second after I stopped screen sharing is <laughs> when the picture, of course, imported because <laughs> it was busy in a scan. But there's that HDR photo I merged. It came right back into Milio automatically, just like how Aaron moved his picture. So I'll stop sharing, but I just want you guys to see that that round tripping <laughs> works really well. It does. Go ahead and reshare right. your screen, Aaron. Share my screen again. <laughs> um, so then what I want to do when I have my photos in Lightroom is I want to make some edits, maybe crop, adjust the colors, and then I want to see those show up in Milio. So if I come into one of my pictures, I can go into develop in Lightroom and I can crop it. Maybe a little bit tighter there. Well, we'll just go ahead and do the auto. And then in order to get it into Milio, if we scroll down here to my published services, I can see that there's one called uh, Milio Photos. If I drag it down here, it adds it to this photo stream and then I can hit publish now. And it will go ahead and create a high quality JPEG of that file. Then if I come in here to Milio, I can see that it's now seen that there's a new um, edited version of that. And now that's what I can see in Milio. So you'll notice over there in the right-hand column under the file name, it has the DNG file and it has a JPEG. So what Milio has done is it's automatically stacked those two versions. So his raw file is still there and preserved. But what we're seeing in Milio is that edited JPEG copy that he made. Yeah, and, and would, what a, do you guys mind for the people that have a hard time seeing the subtle differences? Can you do a dramatic edit, like maybe a really strong black and white so they could see yeah. that it syncs? Yeah, so I come in here, we just switch it over here to Adobe Monochrome and we can come back here. And then it's already in this photo stream. So Lightroom is tracking that something's changed with it. I just have to hit publish now and it's gonna update the published version. And then we'll see here in Milio that the new version comes in pretty quick. Nice. And then if I, if I want to view it on my phone, I just have to turn my phone on. It'll sync over there and I can see all of my uh, Lightroom edits on any of my mobile devices. Um, my wife can see pictures I've taken of the kids on the mobile devices. That was always a pain point before, um, before I started using Milio is that I'd go out and take a bunch of pictures of the kids and then I'd be the only one who could access them because they're all stuck on my computer. That's awesome. Very cool. So um, my typical workflow when I'm dealing, dealing with like DSLR photos is to come into Lightroom, bring them into Lightroom and then send them over to Milio. Um, sometimes the pictures aren't very good and I like to heavily cull my photos. So I delete a lot of photos. So like this particular picture, maybe I don't like it. Maybe it's a little burn. I would delete it in Milio and it's gonna go and delete across all my devices. Uh, Lightroom still thinks it's there though. so it it still has it here. Um, what I do for that is I come up to my folder and I say, uh, synchronize the folder. And now Lightroom's gonna check and see what, what files are where. Now there's several check boxes here. This one that says import new photos, it's found an additional folder in that file. That's the high quality JPEG that we did here. 
We don't want to check that because then Lightroom will bring that JPEG in as if it was a new photo. It doesn't know that, that that's really a, a preview for Mylio. So I'm going to leave this remove missing photos checked and then hit synchronize. And so I can keep my Lightroom catalog and my Mylio catalog um, synchronized together really easily that way. Uh, nice. I control what photos I keep in Mylio and then I just synchronize the folders in Lightroom. And you don't have to do it by folder. You can come up here and do an entire, uh, entire upper level folder. Um, I do it pretty frequently, so there's nothing to remove. Um, but that's how I keep them, keep them in sync. And then I keep my edits in sync by using that publish service. Nice. And then like, like Rich was showing, um, if you have a picture, this is a picture I took with my phone earlier today. Um, I can come up here and I can edit in Lightroom Classic and it's gonna open up the import dialog. Make sure this is checked. I can import it. And then say I wanted to edit this one as well. I can make, make edits. Um, we'll just make this um, black and white as well. And then I'm gonna add this to that same publish service down here. And then just right click and hit publish now. And then within a second or two, it should show up here in Mylio that it's been edited. So most right. of the time when I take pictures of my phone, I do the, all the edits within Mylio. Um, but occasionally if I want to do something with like, like a lot of gradients and stuff, I'll take it out in the Lightroom. Nice. Yeah, and the goal here, guys, is that Mylio is hands down in our opinion, uh, but we've worked really hard on this, like a decade hard, uh, the best image organizer. And we've got tons of new stuff coming that are going to keep building upon that legacy. But we have quite capable editing tools on the device. It's wonderful to take out my smartphone and be editing a 42 megapixel Sony RAW file right on my smartphone, uh, which is you know, not something that most apps can do. But we work seamlessly with other editors. And, and so you know, we have this special Lightroom publish service for Lightroom Classic. Uh, Angela um, and Aaron, I imagine that there's times that you sometimes go to other apps, like you might have another photo editor, or you want to do something advanced in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Uh, Angela, can you tell folks who are using any other editing tool the secret? I showed that concept of send it to my inbox, and then I just move it into the right location. But if you could save back to the same folder, uh, you can also do a little cool shortcut, right? Yeah. So, you know, when Aaron used that photo stream to create that high resolution JPEG copy, you can do that manually with other applications. So what the Lightroom plugin is doing is creating that JPEG file with an underscore display at the end of it. So you can force that process with any other application. Let's say you wanna to go to Luminar Neo. You do an edit there, you go to export to save your file. And when you save it, you're gonna save it as a JPEG, 100% quality. And at the end of your file name, you're just gonna put underscore display, go ahead and hit export. It'll save it back to that original folder and it will do that same stacking procedure that Mylio did with the Lightroom photo. So you have a couple of options. You can do that to stack them or you can do like Rich did and have that tip, that tip copy that's a higher resolution file. It's completely up to you which one you wanna do. And I added a link to a story when you actually just showed that example of how to do the editing and round tripping. Uh, Aaron, you post some wonderful pictures to our community all the time of, of birds and everything else. Do you find yourself revisiting pictures inside of Mylio sometimes for uh, research or inspiration? Do you ever revisit your photography or, or use the lens statistics or the places to kind of help you remember where you found some of these great pictures so you can go back? Yeah, so I use I use the organization tools in Mylio all the time um, for any of like my nature photography in particular. So for that, I've got some albums set up. Um, this one right here is the most applicable to this, and I've got um, an album set up for different types of things. So I've got amphibians, arthropods, birds, fungi, uh, life lists. So I'm an avid birder, so I keep track of all the birds I've seen, and then I try to get the best picture I can of a particular species, and I put this in this life list. Um, album. My life list is a lot higher than the 37 it shows here. I've just started putting this one together real recently, so I'm not, not done with all, all the photo stuff. But if I come in here for birds, I can see um, all the pictures of different species that I've seen when I'm out in the field talking with other birders. They're like, oh, I took a really good picture. And then they're like scrolling through their Facebook posts and trying to figure out where is that picture I took. 
I just open it up and say, oh yeah, we've got this Anna's hummingbird that hangs out in the yard. Um, here's all my pictures that I've gotten of it. So I've gotten you know, a, a ton of pictures of it sitting mm -hmm. in various spots. Um, these are all like the exact same spot, um, but I can get to it real quick. I don't have to figure out what day it was. Um, I just go to this album and- Yeah, and, and you know, I can go hunting through folders, trying to find things. And then uh, do you geotag your, photo, your photos at all? Um, yeah, so my, um, my camera has a GPS in it, so they're automatically geotagged. So if I were to say, uh, search for a Anna's, and then I come over here to map, I can see all the spots I've taken pictures of Anna's hummingbirds. Very um, cool. The other thing, if I come in and clear this. And, and that's super useful because maybe you wanted to remember, oh, where do, where do I keep getting all these great shots? Or it's been a while since I photographed, you could look at the calendar and go, oh, okay, similar season, birds tend to move, but then go and find them. So you've got all this great data about where your pictures were taken. Yep, yeah, the, um, the map view is real nice. Like for, uh, you can zoom in on a location and say, What's, what have I taken around this area? So if I'm at a birding spot that I've been to before, but I don't remember what, what pictures I got there, I can just zoom into that, that location on the map and see what pictures I've taken and, um, maybe remember where, where a good spot was that I got a bunch of good pictures from before. Excellent. Well, Aaron, first off, thank you for posting so many amazing photos to our community, but it's lovely to see different ways that people organize. And uh, you're truly passionate about uh, your subject here. It's just great to see how organized it is. Uh, this works really well. So albums are a manual process, but nothing in an album moves it on your hard drive. So you can make virtual albums and collections. A couple of you were asking about smart albums, more than familiar with that feature. Uh, it is something that we are certainly exploring. And I'm going to talk about that process next of how we explore new tools. Uh, Aaron or Angela, are there any other quick editing tips you'd like to share before we transition to a couple of what's next things as we wrap down the, uh, the webinar? The only thing I want to share is, is, you know, just be creative and have fun and don't feel limited by one application or another because MyLeo lets you access them all. Yeah, I think that I just would echo that. That's one of the things I like most about MyLeo is that I can edit wherever. I mean, I have a, a bunch of editing apps on my, my computer and I can use whichever one I want and still be able to have uh, that edited version available to me on my phone. Um, on my computer, wherever I'm at. Yeah, Milio is pretty much the creative glue that holds our photos together. And like what I like to say is, I always have every picture and uh, I never did that before. I literally used to travel around and it wasn't even all my pictures, but I would have like one hard drive of all the pictures I meant to edit when I'd have time. And that means I'd take out my laptop and I'd plug this in and you know I'm lugging around all this extra weight. And now I could just take out my iPad and edit right on the device and do really cool edits. and. Uh, Aaron, you know, you were jumping in between applications there. If you add stars or ratings or labels or keywords or any of that stuff, all the programs talk to each other. So it's pretty cool. Yep. yep. Sometimes when I'm doing a, a big set of pictures, I'll import them into Lightroom. I'll do a bunch of the keywording. I'll do a bunch of the culling and then I'll move them into MyLeo. And then MyLeo sees, oh, there's already stars on these ones. Um, I don't have to go in and do it twice. Yep. Excellent. Well, Aaron, thank you so much. And uh, Aaron uh, is on our data team and he helps us make smart decisions about what needs to happen in the app and does a whole bunch of stuff on the back end to make Mylio better. Aaron, thank you for joining us today. It was great to have you. Yeah, yeah great to be you. here.